Now, today we are going to be reading from another section of this lovely book called In Love at Ease. It's about a spiritual teacher to millions of people named Pramukh Swami Maharaj. And this is about everyday spirituality with him. So far, we're part way through the introduction. And last time we talked about who he was when it came to all of his accomplishments and humanitarian efforts, etc. Now, I'll just repeat that last sentence that we ended before we open up to the next section. The subject of this book is how, why, for whom, and with what intent Swami Sri committed to lifelong service and selfless love. A closer look at his journey provides greater understanding of how he treaded his own spiritual path and helped others do the same on their spiritual and worldly journeys. This section is called Humanly Divine. I like that. <laughs> Humanly Divine. We find comfort in processing the world in binaries. It becomes simple. It is easy to label. It is black and white. But in our quest to distinguish between the two, we forget to appreciate what they inevitably create. The greys. These greys are not dull or unremarkable, but often go unnoticed because they look and feel average. They blend in. They are accessible, relatable, and attainable. They are intimate and proximate, and therefore they feel more real. These greys are where most people feel at ease, for they are more familiar. Our understanding of the divine is of a similar sort. We celebrate its manifestations in the skies, sacred images and scriptures, as we should, but often overlook it in its most tangible, relatable forms, the breath and the flesh. The popular opinion is that being human and at once divine is paradoxical. How can a mortal be God or even God-like? The answer lies in their effort and intent. Hindu traditions have always celebrated divinity in God's creation and more emphatically, sorry, emphatically in those who aspire and inspire others to reach for divinity. This may be why the, uh, uh, how do I pronounce this? Adhikavi, the first great poet of Sanskrit, sage Valmiki, hailed Sri Rama, which is a common form of the divine, in his Ramayana as a Narottamat, the best among men, an ideal human who resembled the divine, even before lauding him as a manifestation of the divine. The Ramayana is one of two great itihasas, historical epics of Indian civilization. The text begins by praising Sri Rama for his ability and determination to be a perfect human, while encouraging others to do the same. The conversation between sage Valmiki and the celestial sage Narada describes Sri Ram as a humanly divine being 
who embodies seemingly contradictory characteristics with ease. For example, Sri Rama is refined, yet accessible. He is erudite, yet loves all beings equally. He is bold like a raging fire, yet can endure silently like Mother Earth. He is calm, yet enthusiastic. He is loving, yet detached. He is pleasant and spirited, yet profound and sincere. The balance and abundance of all these characteristics are impossible to find in one individual, and that is what set Sri Rama apart. It is what made Sri Rama humanly divine. It is this practical, easygoing, everyday journey towards human perfection that exudes divinity and helps others experience it. I share the stories and lessons from the life of one such ideal spiritual aspirant and master, through whom millions have been known and felt divinity, have known and felt divinity. Interactions with Swami Sri's life exemplify a natural balance of paradoxical qualities that inspired others to aim for human perfection with ease and humility. The lessons from his life may seem embedded in a Swami Narayan or Hindu way of life. They may seem framed in a Gujarati linguistic and cultural register. They may seem to have originated in the 20th century and faded in the 21st. However, these universal and timeless lessons embody the wisdom which is relevant to all those walking on their respective spiritual journeys in life. These interactions have made everyday lessons of spirituality accessible to millions and will continue to do so for generations to come. His life became a golden standard for spiritual excellence while continuing to achieve and succeed in the quote-unquote real world. His spirituality was not remote or removed, but was real and relatable for everybody. And that is why thousands of individuals go about life asking, how would Pramukh Swami Maharaj react in this situation? In this book, I set aside the theology and the beliefs of the community to make sense of how millions experienced and felt Swami Sri's presence. I do not make the bold claim, nor do I believe that Pramukh Swami was God. I have seen him sternly scold those who tried to even hint at the notion. He was human, humanly divine. He was in love at ease. His journey from bhakti, loving devotion, in love, to Sahajanand at ease, was an exemplary model of everyday spirituality. My guru lived in this world and resembled divinity that was otherworldly. This is how I, we, experienced him. And so, we end the first chapter of In Love at Ease. And what a powerfully worded first chapter that was. So I thank you all for listening. And next time we'll start chapter two, which is called In Love, <laughs> Bhakti Personified. 
again thank you so much for listening with me with this wonderful book sent by none other than Sky Guardian and uh, I did want to mention briefly as well that in case anyone was wondering about buying the book yourself the proceeds of which go to help tribal education schools in India so that's a lovely little bonus fact for you if you're interested. <laughs>